Oh, that's a good vintage. Hello and welcome to Chugging Along. I'm Tim. And I'm Sam. So yes, welcome to this cruising vlog where you are joining us as part of our trip between Thiel and Clangochlan. If you've been watching our channel, you'll know that we are massive fans of sherry. And today we're actually drinking um, some sherry that's been gifted to us by our most recent quiz winners, Malk and Sue. It's Croft, so it's a big player in the sherry market. <laughs> and actually it's... um. Oh, it's very, it's very lovely. It's very light with nice sweetness and a crispness and a, 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 almost a subtle dryness to it as well. It I is, that say, is subtle. It? Very drinkable. Absolutely. Very drinkable. Thank you very much, Mark and Sue. Today's cruising vlog is on the River Thames between Cullum and Goring, which is quite near Oxford. And we are trying to get on to the Oxford Canal. And if you remember from our previous cruising vlog, we have bent steering and we thought we were just going to get on with it and try and fix it when we got onto the canal. But you'll see in this week's video, it got so bad, we had no choice but to fix it ourselves. So you want to stick around in the video and see how we fix that. And also, it was our longest cruise we've ever done so you want to stick around right to the end to see the statistics on how far we are into the journey and our average speed and all the rest of it as well we were also joined by our windsmoring buddy jeff who's also making his way onto the oxford canal so before we set off that morning tim went on a little walk to go and see if he could get a nice view from a hill when you cross the bridge you leave goring and you actually enter streetly it's a different village in a different county and the railway station is actually called Goring and Streetly, but it's in fact in Goring, as is the Tesco's that we went to the night before. And you can tell that the Streetly folk actually might feel a bit hard done by there. So as you can see there, there is the pub, the bull, and it was time for me just to climb a hill with no real plan really. And this was the view that I ended up getting. Was it worth it? Yeah, well, it was all right, wasn't it? I mean, I think there was actually an official hill which I could have climbed. So next time I do one of those morning wonders, I'll definitely do a bit more research, but still nice way to start the day. Thank you, Streetly. So there's a Dutch barge going out of Gory Lock, which meant that the lock was now set in our favor as we started our journey. Look at this interesting short wide beam. <laughs> I went over and started speaking to Jeff as we set off and Tim fired up Mariel's modern engine. Jeff fired up his traditional Newbury engine and him and Tim entered the lock in tandem. We tied our boats together to make a makeshift wide beam so then it was easier uh, you know, for Jeff and then only one of us uh, had to do the rope so yeah it was quite good. We got through Goring Lock quite quickly and we got onto lock number two, Cleve Lock, which wasn't that far away, which meant that after that lock we had a long stretch of river lock free cruising on a pleasant morning, which was really nice. We were actually being overtaken there by a friendly Scottish couple on a cruiser. It was at this point in the trip that we realised the steering was just too bent and it was just too uncomfortable to carry on, especially all the way to Oxford. So we said that we would get the spanner out and give it a go after the next lock at Benson. You know, it was hurting my rib cage standing there in an awkward position and we knew there were some tight bends coming up as well. So 
that's us going under the beautiful Molesford Railway Bridge. We love the diagonal brickwork on this bridge. All the swans are owned by the Queen. If that's true, then all islands on the Thames are owned by Canadian geese and we wouldn't want to step on their turf. And there's Jeff chugging behind us as we approach Wallingford. He wasn't planning on coming all the way to Cullum with us because he was going to stop near Benson. He actually had longer on his Thames licence than we did. We only had a couple of days left, so we had to be a bit quicker. Can you see that narrowboat on the bank there? We were wondering what it was doing. We've never seen Mary Ellen out of the water before. We did have some things done to her before we bought her, but we never saw her taken out of the water because it was locked down and we were in a different part of the country. Here we are going under Wallingford Bridge. Can you see that duck fly under the arch with us at the same time? It was actually quite strange arriving in Wallingford though because everything felt smaller. When we were there last year, it felt like we were arriving in Tokyo Bay. The bridge felt big, the town felt huge, the, the wall where you sort of moor the boat felt massive as well. It does cost 10 quid to moor there. And when we did it last year, that was when we gave Juanita a lift great memories and maybe it all just feels smaller now because we were just new to boating at that time you know we're nearly at our one year cruise anniversary now that's a real move from the cow there no sound effect beautiful wooden door there looks like a portcullis something you'd see on a castle so here we finally approach Benson Lock where we could all come together and try and fix this bent steering. So here you can see that I pulled the boat out of the lock and onto the lock landing area. We were nervous that loosening the nut would just make the rudder just fall into the River Thames. So Jeff suggested tying a rope around it, which worked really well. And there we are loosening those two nuts, which hold the rudder and the tiller bar into alignment. So we worked together with Jeff and he pulled the rope one way and Tim pushed the rudder against the stern at the same time. After two big pushes it straightened up perfectly. Thanks Jeff. Okay, so let me just check that it's lining up straight. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's, that's better. That's, that's, it's almost yeah. straight, is it? That's bang on straight, perfect. <laughs> there we go. So, so it must have moved in there then. That nut was loose though. Yeah, it could have been a bit loose, couldn't it? So make sure mm. it's next to tight. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah, it could have been there. Like wear and tear over time, it just sort of loosening up maybe. Things, things, yeah. Mm. It gets vibration and things. That's true, yeah. You know, it's a, yeah, vibrations I suppose, isn't it? And then it just knocks out. So Tim, in that moment, mm. how confident did you feel that you'd be able to actually get this fixed? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, looking at it, like looking at those two nuts, it definitely made sense that they were mm. the ones that were, you know, doing that thing of holding the tiller and the rudder together. So, yeah, I was fairly confident we would do it. But I mean, how quickly it happened, like just pushing it two pushes and then it being perfectly straight, definitely. That was a lot easier mm -hmm. uh, than expected. So yeah, an absolute result really. And yeah, definitely gives us confidence going forward to do our own problem solving. We do have RCR um, cover, which, mm. you know, helps, which someone can come out and help us. But sometimes you don't need to do it and we, help, we can fix it ourselves. So yeah, real confidence booster, I would say. <laughs> 
Jeff went off to look for a mooring nearby as we had a cup of tea and prepared for the rest of our long journey to Cullum. You might recognise this bridge we're going past here, as this is where Tim and Henry did the triathlon, which Henry won. So just what a difference that made, actually holding the tiller bar straight and the boat going straight and standing in a comfortable position. Yeah, it's the little things you appreciate, because that was a full day of cruising like that when you add it all up, so yeah really happy and uh, yeah good weather on the river thames not too busy lovely stuff really it was still a beautiful day and it was now time to pass some thames side castles and do some tight corners but luckily with our steering fixed As we previously mentioned, Jeff was out looking for a mooring, but in fact all of the moorings that we saw there were very wild and difficult to moor at, or just simply there wasn't really just enough space. So by the time we actually got to the next lock, we saw Jeff there with us as he actually had to go through that lock to go and find another mooring. Luckily the lock keeper did give him a tip of a place where he could do it, a nice low field where it should be easy for him, so yeah, that was good. So Jeff managed to find his spot and we thought that maybe we would be able to join him so we actually panicked and made one of those stupid impulse decisions where we decided to turn Marielle around to join him only to discover that there was only enough room for one boat and then it became so windy that we actually couldn't turn Marielle around again and we got caught in a gust of wind mid-turn. Luckily we managed to straighten Marielle out, but we were getting pretty tired at this point. At this point of the cruise we saw some wonderful fields and it was now later on in the day so you get those lovely reflections. Just before Clifton Lock, we went under the stunning Clifton Hampton Bridge where they had a caravan park nearby.
Cullum is an interesting part of the Thames because the bit the boats go down is called Cullum Cut, which is effectively a man-made canal on the River Thames. And that is where we would be mooring for the night, yeah, just after the lock landing area. We always said we wanted to try a wild mooring on the Thames, but the one time we did, it didn't really feel that wild because it was on a man-made part of the river. We are canal folk after all. There was a lovely field nearby and as the sun was setting it was one of those days where we just sat down and almost fell asleep. I don't even think we even had a proper tea that night. We fell asleep that evening knowing that we'd fixed our steering and we'd be in Oxford this time the next day. That's the end of today's cruise and join us next week as we leave the River Thames um, and make our way to Oxford, a city that we both love. And we join the Oxford Canal there, leaving the river behind. And now it's time for those all important statistics. We did 18 miles and six locks and that was all in eight and a half hours, thus making our average speed 2.1 miles an hour, exactly the same as last cruise, yeah. which is interesting, <laughs> isn't it? And then now, now that that makes our trip average speed 1.98 miles an hour, so close to two miles an hour. And it means that we've done 69 out of 269 miles so far. So 200 miles to go to Klingochlan. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. <laughs> Long-term viewers of the channel may remember Sam and I's diesel fireplace stove top cook-off, which was in <laughs> winter. We did a cooking competition against each mm. other. Uh, Sam did, in fact, win that. But we were thinking maybe we could revisit that and do a summer version with our thermal cooker, which was gifted to us by one of our subscribers, Jilly D. It was very mm. kind of her. And yeah, this is what we use to cook in summer, because obviously we don't have the fireplace on when we do some of our meals in this. And yes, we were thinking that we could do a cook-off. <laughs> Just want to see, yeah, would uh, anyone be interested in seeing that? Uh, yeah, leave a comment below and also you can guess, yeah, what recipes do you think that we will be doing? Also leave that in the comments and if yeah, we get enough interest then yeah, it's time for a cook-off. Is that exciting prospect? Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting. It's yours to lose, isn't it? <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. And remember, no matter what you do in life, you've got to keep chugging.